We're coming to you from the Grassy Valley Stage Pulpit in Knoxville, Tennessee. We are an outreach ministry of Grassy Valley Baptist Church, and we're located on the corner of Lovell Road and Kingston Pike. We're your hosts, Richard Britton, and I'm Alan Kirk. You know, today we're discussing another word of the week, and our hope is that you'll remember the word and find it applicable in your daily life. Well, we have a word of the week this week that's probably about a year long. So, yes. <laughs> But we're going to try to confine it and uh, define it. Hopefully through the Holy Spirit, we'll, we'll be able to explain it and put it in the correct contents because this, this is kind of a big word. It, it's, uh, it's not a word that we use every day. It's, it's not found in the Bible very often. Right. right, right, we don't see it. But uh, the word is sanctification. Yes. And so I think if we talk about that and the process of it and, and what it means, um, it's one of those religious words. Um, Paul used it quite a bit in explaining it, which we'll get into a little bit in Romans and in his book of, uh, or his epistle of uh Thessalonians when he wrote the Thessalonians and I use that as as two good examples but um, let me read the definition of uh, the Merriam-Webster definition of sanctification Uh, they say it's the action of making or declaring something holy Mm -hmm. now you brought that word up before and I don't want to lose sight of that because that's very important it's declaring something holy the sanctification of bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. Now that would be a Catholic definition there. Yes, yes. there you go. Okay. That's one way to define it. Yeah. Also have the action or process of being freed from sin or purified. Now that's part of the separation. That's, yes. that's, a, that's a good part of it. The action of causing something to be or seem morally right Mm. or acceptable. And I think Merriam-Webster really had a hard time. I don't know if they were religious or not, (laughs) but it seems like they they did their best to try to find sanctification. But I believe I found a better definition. All right. All right, so hang on, because this is like the Apostle Paul in Romans. I got this off of a poster up in my Sunday school room. Okay. Sanctification is the experience Mm -hmm. beginning in regeneration. We've talked about that before. Yes. By which the believer is set apart to God's purposes. Uh Okay, so a separation set, set apart and is enabled to, and this is, this is the part of the definition that I really think hits the rubber with the road, and is enabled to progress toward moral and spiritual maturity. Mm. And here it is, through the presence and power of the Holy Spirit dwelling in them. I see. We don't do this on our own, right? No, we don't. Uh. Okay. Growth and grace should continue throughout the regenerate person's life. That's the evidence of sanctification is the continued regenerated person's life. In other words, we're we're being renewed every day via the Holy Spirit. And I think the key word in sanctification here is, or the key words here is, is that we're indwelt with the Holy Spirit. He's the one that sanctifies us. And I think it's an action. Some people, I think, view sanctification in terms of it's a one in a life, once in a lifetime thing. You're sanctified, you're set apart, you know, like a priest. And, you know, the the Catholics, since you brought that up, the Catholic Mm -hmm. faith would see a priest set apart for Mm -hmm. sanctification and that's why you know you see priests and monks uh, devoting their life to becoming more and more holy Mm -hmm. but it's it it that's we totally miss the mark i think Mm -hmm. when we look at it like that sanctification is a process that when we're 
as believers indwelt with the Holy Spirit. He's our comforter. He's our teacher. He mm -hmm. educates. He, mm -hmm. he brings us alongside himself that if we're a willing participant, mm -hmm. yes, we are set apart to become holy and separate from the rest of the world. To me, that's what sanctification is. It's not an exclusive club for priests no. and monks and other holy people. Yes. It's for everyone who want to drink that spring water that wells up like Jesus told us to come and drink yes. from his living water. That's what that is, is he's setting people apart. He's setting those whom he called apart to sanctify them for holiness to be the Israelite people were set apart as a chosen people, right? Yes. They were sanctified through the Lord. Yes. As a people. As a people. However, we know that God calls us individually to himself mm -hmm. now through the Holy Spirit. Yes, not all Israel even though the nation was chosen and called, not all of them entered into the promised land. No. They had been set apart and they were given the opportunity, but because of their disobedience, they didn't make it. Right. So yeah. this definition encompasses, I think, what sanctification really, truly means. Um, and, you know, when it says, and is enabled to progress toward... And the word progress, that means continually. You're, you're moving. Progress is a verb, right? And you're mm -hmm. continually moving towards the mark mm -hmm. to progress towards moral and spiritual maturity. Yes. So if we've been, and, and here again, I'm, I'm just challenging people. I'm not pointing fingers. But if we are not maturing in our faith, like your mother of 60 years who I mean I truly know that she has matured but you know if we're not maturing in our faith and we're still feeding on the milk of the word then we really have to question our sanctification yes. and our set apartness yes with the Lord to become more holy more moral yes. you know uh and I, I think people, you know, they get stuck along the way, along the path. You know, I've used the example in, in, in uh, classes that I've taught about, you know, we've got this line that, you know, here we are before we're sanctified and yeah. before we're called by the Lord. And then we progress along this line until our death. And we're being sanctified along that line, that timeline in our life. And we become more and more, we progress towards our death yes. to become more holy and uh, spiritual so that when we die, we're bent towards the Lord. We're bent towards being sanctified with the Lord. We're growing in our relationship with him and maturing. And I believe people get stuck along the way, and they just need to be reminded. That's why we're given scripture about, you know, iron sharpens iron, and that we're supposed to hold our brothers and sisters in Christ accountable. Yes. You know, it's not just pointing a finger and being judgmental. It's to help them along with their sanctification process. Yes. You know, it's all perspective. I mean, we take Scripture sometimes out of context to the yes. point where we think of, um, you know, well, when it says that we're supposed to hold our brothers and sisters accountable, it, there's some sort of judgmental connotation on that. And, you know, we have to look at it from we're helping our brothers and sisters in their sanctification process. Yes. It's not a judgmental thing. It's a, you know, wanting them to be to stay close with the Lord and walk close. Yes. When when we start out in this life, we're accustomed to living in a sinful world as sinners. Yeah. And when we believe in Jesus Christ and receive the Holy Spirit who now indwells us, we have to undergo some changes. We, we did, our sense of what we should do and what we should not do changes radically. There right. are things I used to do as a sinner that I really can't, I can't continue 
as a believer in Christ. Well, and you don't want to. I really don't want to. It's out of the love yes. for God. Yes. I know my language was terrible as an unbeliever. Mm -hmm. And the day I became a believer, I noticed when I would use bad language, I would be convicted. That can, yeah. And uh, I had begun the sanctification process. Right. I didn't, I wouldn't have been able to tell you that I was being sanctified. Uh, right. I didn't know what was happening. I was, in my understanding, this is wrong to talk like this. I need to change the way I speak. And uh, what happened, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, you yeah. really hit it right there. It's knowing the difference now between right and wrong. Yes. You had an idea. You personally had an idea what right and wrong was. But yes. now God has intervened. The Holy Spirit comes to indwell within you. Yes. And he teaches you the difference between right and wrong. Whether you've read the Bible or not, I didn't even it's know, that convicting spirit. I didn't even know the word sanctification but the process was underway already. There, yeah. The Holy Spirit yeah. was convicting me of my, my language. And uh, over, t see, I can't take any credit whatsoever for the changes that right. have taken place. I'm, I'm a uh, recipient of God's grace. He's sanctifying me. And I'm glad. Yeah. I've just surrendered myself to him. And I say, make me into the man you want me to be. Right. And he's changing me. Right. And uh, I was immediately, we did justification. I was immediately justified. Right. I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm innocent now. But my behavior and the way I view things, I have, there's a learning curve. I have to learn from the Holy Spirit and I have to uh, be willing to, to change my, my language and change my other behaviors That's, as well. And we've talked about that. We've got to mm -hmm. get out of our own way. Yes. <laughs> in order to allow the spirit that indwells us to do his work. And uh, we're on this journey together mm -hmm. when you have a brother in Christ and we mm -hmm. can help each other. Yes. And, and the helping each other not only helps the one you're helping, but it helps the helper. Yes. You know, we both benefit yes. by, by helping each other. And a, ch and a corporate body, a church, we, we should gather and encourage each other to make the necessary changes. Right. But it's things like this, it's times like this and in small groups like Sunday mm -hmm. school or Bible study classes or whatever, that that very thing becomes more evident because in a church setting, you can come to church Yes. And you can, you know, have the fellowship and hi, thank you, how you doing, and <laughs> the loving and the pats on the back. And you can maybe hear a good message, uh, which you hear from Pastor Mark every week. But anyway, yes. shameless p plug for him. <laughs> but, you know, the sanctification process, I really think, happens with the one-on-one, -on -one, the discipling. Uh, yes. it, it happens in small groups. You know, Bible studies or Sunday school, that's where the sanctification process comes in. Yeah. Because it's a smaller group, you can get more pinpointed. That's mm -hmm. why I think in Acts 2.42, the Lord was sanctifying his church. Mm -hmm. Because when it states in Acts about going from house to house, praising the Lord and, yeah. you know, selling their goods and sharing and sh you know, their goods with each other. I'm sure that they were sharing their lives with each other. Yes. That's where the sanctification process mm. really started working, uh, not only from the Holy Spirit standpoint that indwells us, but also from the standpoint of uh, an external, you know, so to speak, the hands and feet of God working in a yes. real world-like you know, situation. I, th I think that's a, one of the main changes that occurs I was pretty self-centered uh, right. all my life before as an unbeliever. Mm -hmm. And then as a believer, I was aware of another family that I had become a part of. And, there you go. and I wanted to be close to my brothers and sisters in Christ. I, I didn't, right. I wouldn't have been able to explain that back when it first happened. But now I have a deep love for my fellow believers, you know, brothers and sisters. Right. 
and I want to see them do well. Right. And and they right. want to see me do well. Right. And we all benefit from that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, let me get a couple of scriptures in okay. here, okay. Um, because I, from the angle that I'm I'm going to come at this from when I was reviewing sanctification, Paul did a really good job in Romans and also in Thessalonians. Um, And I want to give people an idea of Scripture uh, just because that's the teacher coming (laughs) in me. But um, you can go back and view this. But Paul was always reminding us who we are in Jesus Christ now that we have the Spirit dwelling within us. And he does a really good job in Romans. And um, I took some highlights out of it. But in Romans 6... 18 through 19, and I'm just going to read the scripture to you because it speaks for itself. Um, And having been freed from sin, which we are, we're freed from sin once we become sanctified, then we, we choose, right? Yes, we choose, yes. We, before that, we have no choice, but we choose, all right, from sin uh, to continue. You become slaves of righteousness, Mm -hmm. right? I am speaking in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, resulting in further lawlessness, Mm. so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, resulting in sanctification. So see, it takes effort on our part. Mm Mm-hmm. It's not something that, oh, you just, you know, blast me, Lord, with sanctification and, you know, I'll automatic. No, there's effort involved on our part. We're still free to choose. Absolutely. He doesn't squash our Mm -mm. uh, uh, free will. Mm -mm. He allows us to choose because that's what a loving relationship does. It allows you to choose. All right. Then in Romans 6, 22 through 23, Between these scriptures, there's a little bit more talking about the sinful nature and so on and so forth. But in Romans 6, 22, but now having been freed from sin, he talks about it again, and enslaved to God, Mm. you derive your benefits, Mm -hmm. resulting in sanctification and the outcome, eternal life. Yes. We've talked about that, right? Yes. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. He gives us, Paul gave them the reason to be sanctified. That, you know, if we stay in sin, it's death, which it talks about in um, Genesis, right? God told Adam and Eve, as soon as you eat from the that tree, yes. you're going to die. It was a spiritual death. Yes. All right. So, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So he's appealing to people, you know, be sanctified in the Lord. If you're a believer, you believe in the Lord Jesus, you accept him as your Lord and Savior. The spirit comes to dwell within you. You know, now, and, and I've taught this in class before, you know, we're either going to be slaves to one or the, there's no gray here. Yes. There's no gray. You're either going to be a slave to the devil and to sin right. and the flesh, yeah. or you're going to be a slave to God and his righteousness mm-hmm. and his sanctification power yeah. through the Holy Spirit. You're going to be one or the other. There's no middle ground. And if you don't think there isn't a middle ground, you're already dying in the flesh. You're already dying to sin. Absolutely. I mean, there, there's no, there, you've already made the decision. If you haven't made the decision for Christ, you've already made the decision for death. Yes, you're dead in your trespasses and sins. There's a really firm law given the wages of sin is death yeah and that's not going to be changed there there's no exceptions i mean it's very clear and pinpoint you know um and and when and of course we've talked about this on other episodes but um you know sin uh and and matter of fact we're going to be 
talking about that very subject uh, in an upcoming episode. Uh, and I don't want to go off on a rabbit trail about this, but, you know, <laughs> sin is death. I mean, it's a spiritual, it, 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 it's, when we say the word death, it may not necessarily be, you know, like a, a physical death in terms of what you might think as a non-believer, mm -hmm. but that spiritual death, you know, and even Adam and Eve didn't understand that concept. They had no concept no. of what death was. They hadn't experienced it. They hadn't seen it. I had no concept of death. It's biblically speaking a separation a separation for physical death is the spirit and soul separated from the body. Right. We, we bury the body, but we never bury this person, the spirit and soul. No, we don't. Uh, and it's uh, going to go one place or the other. <laughs> yes. There's another death called the second death. That's when the spirit and soul are separated from God yeah. in a place of conscious torment. And that's so, so far out of the regular thought processes that we have. Mm -hmm. you, you've discovered these things in the Bible. Right. I'm so thankful for this. And the, the, whole, the whole story of the Bible is to relieve us from the penalty for our sins and then set us free through sanctification from the practice of those sins. Yes. And uh, through doing so, we, we move forward to eternal life in a sinless environment. Right. Right. Well, now, Paul talks something about that in, when he was writing the Thessalonians. Okay. And uh, I want to bring that up really quick because this is, this is really, uh, Paul, he, he explains it so well. And it's, it is such a complicated concept, I guess, to try and put into words. It's like trying to explain the Holy Spirit <laughs> or... You know, it, it's a concept that you try to put words to. It's like trying to describe a sunset. You can describe it, but you don't get the feeling of it. You know what I'm saying? It's, yes, it's <laughs> you have to experience it. I remember trying to uh, describe banana pudding to somebody. They've never seen a banana <laughs> yeah. or had a banana wafer, yeah. a vanilla wafer, or they've never had it. You can tell them all day, uh, but they're not ever going to understand how good it is until you give them a bowl of banana pudding and a spoon and let them try it. Try it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, Paul speaks to the Thessalonians and it's his example. Now, you know, the Thessalonians, we've taught this in Sunday school, but they were, they were definitely a spirit filled church. Now they weren't yes. all perfect, oh, no. but that church he used, I think is the example of, you know, with the Holy spirit and dwelling Holy spirit, they got it. Mm -hmm. They not only, uh, were indwelt with the Holy Spirit, but they shared, the, you know, Paul and Silas and probably Luke was there. You know, they shared the gospel that they gave to them and spread out further and created disciples. And yeah. I mean, I think it, I personally think it was one of his, his uh, favorite churches. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'll have to ask him when I see him, but I, I'm, <laughs> Paul's the one I want to sit down with first. Oh. I mean, I know I want to, I know I want to talk to Jesus and I, and I want to see God and I want to see, him. but Paul is just, he's, he's like my guy. He, he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's like apostle, me man. and he's so detailed about everything. So I want him to sit and explain for a few hundred years what sanctification is actually yeah. meant. But anyway, so Paul speaks to the Thessalonians, his example of a spirit filled church. In chapter 4, verses 1 through 8, using the word sanctification three times to drive a point home. Then in 1 Thessalonians 4, 7 through 8, he says, For God has not called us for the purpose of impurity, mm. but in sanctification. So he's like, he already knows that the Thessalonian church has been sanctified. Mm. And he's just reminding them that, you know, we're not called for the purpose of impurity but in sanctification. And as you know, I mean, there was all kinds of outside influences trying to influence them. So he's trying to clarify, look, you know, these folks that are coming in and trying to put ideas into your head, they're wrong. Yes. He wants you to stay pure. And in verse eight, he says, so he who rejects this is not rejecting man, but the God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Yes. 
So he's saying, you know, you're not rejecting man. You can reject man. But what's more important is, is that if you don't reject man, you're rejecting the Holy Spirit. You know, a, a God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Yes. The gift of the Holy Spirit is absolutely essential if we're going to become God's child, yeah. if we're going to be justified, sanctified, glorified, if we're going to spend eternity with God, we absolutely must have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And we live by the Holy Spirit. So it stands to reason we should allow the Holy Spirit to relieve us of those desires to practice yeah. sin. Well, and here's the other thing. If you'll, if you'll notice this in Paul's writing, he makes the assumption that you know, and he's, he's talking to the people who have the Holy Spirit indwelled in them. Mm -hmm. And he's basically saying, hey, guys, you know, you've, you've got the Holy Spirit indwelling in you. That means you have discernment. Right? right? The Holy Spirit gives you discernment. Yes. The Holy Spirit teaches you what discernment is. He tells you what right and wrong is. Yes. He sanctifies you, right? He's helping you along the pathway. I, he gives you the discernment to know the difference between what people are teaching you that's wrong and then what's yes. right. Yes, I remember well some of the things I was doing before I became a believer. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, those when I received Christ and the Holy Spirit began the sanctification process, I began to see things differently. Yeah, And I didn't want to do those things any longer and... There's a long list of things in it. And it didn't happen immediately. Mm -hmm. It was uh, a gradual but, but very clear uh, set of changes. Right. And uh, I was um, given an opportunity to cooperate. Right. You know, and I, I, I began to think, wow, this is... Well, that difference between knowing right and wrong... Yes. That's discernment. I had, I finally had some discernment, yes. Yeah. It starts off as baby steps, but then yes. it get, it grows more and more as we mature in our faith. Yes. So, well, let me, let me read First Peter okay. uh, 1, 2 with you. And this is his opening statement. So it's not just all on Paul, you know. I mean, Peter... Peter knew what sanctification was as well. All the apostles were aware of what it was. But this is his opening statement in 1 Peter 1, 2. And he's writing in verse 2, According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood, then he says, may grace and peace be yours in the fullest measure. So he has an opening statement that he's reminding folks basically who they are. And yes, there's a lot of wisdom in this passage that's being imparted to the hearers. You may not know who you are initially, uh, and, and the apostles will teach you. Yes. Gently, they'll they'll teach you and pretty firmly too. But but uh, this is written to God's elect, to God's chosen, and it's coming from God to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, he explains the process of sanctifying. It's the work of the Holy Spirit that we freely received. Right. Now I'm going to throw you a curve here. Another one. Okay. <laughs> And this one's out of Hebrews 12, 14. Now, it doesn't speak to, well, it does speak of sanctification, but I'm, I'm going to read the scripture to you and you tell me your thoughts on this one. But Hebrews 12, 14. Pursue peace with all men mm -hmm. and the sanctification without which no one will see the Lord. Oh. Look at the consequences of not being sanctified without which you will not see the Lord. Now, we were talking about that earlier in miracles, right? Yes. Oh, that's good. Yes. So if we don't have the sanctification process or person dwelling within us, the Holy Spirit, we're not going to be able to see the Lord, right? And we're no. not going to be able to treat 
our fellow man properly is what I'm saying. Pursue peace with all men because that's evidence of sanctification mm -hmm. and the sanctification without which no one will see the Lord. One, one thing that's helped me is until they have received Jesus Christ, they are dead. Yeah. And it's not like we're trying to get them to reform themselves. Right. We're going to have to raise them from the dead. Well, you and I can't accomplish that. We can't raise people no, from the dead. The, the Holy, yeah, I know. God, the Holy Spirit can resurrect them. Now, once they've been born again and they do have the Holy Spirit, then they can. That's where the teaching process comes in and the yes. iron sharpens iron and we love to get with our brothers and sisters. But yes. that before that process happens, yeah. um, I find myself getting frustrated. And But I've learned um, and I'm starting to learn to walk away well, and not allow that frustration because that's not from God. I've learned. That's already. from me. <laughs> that, that makes per well your desire is is pure i mean you want to see them born again but i've learned over the years i can't disciple someone until they've been born again they've right i, I can't disciple a lost person right the lost people i can share the gospel with and i can pray for them but until they receive christ by faith i'm not going to advance the process so i'm not i'm not going to be able to disciple or or anything i can i can share the gospel until right. they receive christ but and that's really all we're called to do and yes. i have to keep reminding mm. myself of that that you know we're as christians as believers mm -hmm. we're just called to share the gospel and then allow the holy spirit to do his sanctifying work yes he does within it. people yeah. and um and but you know that that would be if any challenge anyone who's listening yeah. that that would be my challenge to people is to pay attention i mean that was our very first episode pay attention to the sanctifying work of the holy spirit you may not see it in those words right no but you no. you will see the work of the holy spirit in your life yes. if you just pay attention attention to it and that's i think the key to be risen from the dead is yes. you know to take those dead eyes and look around and hear and listen and see and taste and smell and all the five senses if we put it in the right perspective we'll see god working in our lives absolutely there there are some changes that will be very noticeable oh yeah yeah uh, paul talked about changes that take place in a group of believers they're they're believers they've been mm -hmm. born again and he's going to introduce them to this idea of sanctification it's in first corinthians chapter six right and okay. in verse nine he says or do you not know that the unrighteous uh, will not inherit the kingdom of god and then he lists some practices and behaviors here do not be deceived neither fornicators nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Right. And in the spirit of our God. The and in the spirit yes. of our God, which is the vehicle to which all of that changes. Yes. Yeah. Once the yeah. Holy Spirit is received, right. he begins this absolutely amazing process of changing us from the sinners that we were. And I right. would have uh, fit into several of those categories <laughs> there. <laughs> and and he's not going to allow he's not going to allow me to remain in these these categories. Right. I, I'm going to be dedicated to God, and I've I've become holy unto God, not of my own doing. Right. I'm just cooperating with the Holy Spirit as He makes these changes. I'm really thankful for that. You know, I'm yeah. thankful for His uh, desire to sanctify us. It's it's 
none of us could sanctify ourselves. None oh gosh, no. Yeah. Gosh, no. Yeah. Um, we cannot do anything on our own. Mm -mm. He wants us to know that we're, our bodies are his temples. We're the temples of the Holy Spirit. And uh, it's a gift from God. To we're set apart as holy. Set apart for as him. holy. That's you it. know, Scripture talks about us being um, uh, the light of the world, salt of the earth and light of the world, and, and separating us apart, mm -hmm. Jewish as well as Gentile. And we're the Gentiles. Um, you know, it, it's not just exclusive to the Israelite nation and to Jews. Um, God sets us, those that he has chosen, set apart for yeah. his holiness yeah. to show that he is alive and that there is a sovereign God that's in control of all things. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even though civilizations have risen and fallen and uh, I mean, oh my gosh, we could get off on that <laughs> since the beginning of time on rabbit trails to no end. Um, but he has always kept a remnant, and it's spoken of even in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. of remnants of, of believers, of people that would, you know, he always leaves a remnant. He may tear a kingdom down. He may tear a civilization down, but there's always a remnant of believers who have been sanctified and set apart in holiness to continue his ministry among us to draw himself. And the whole reason for it is, is yes, to bring glory to him, but we're his creation. We you know? are. We've uh, been created to be his chosen vessels right. and to literally be his children. Uh, there's a... Uh, calling out of this world that's mm -hmm. got to take place mm -hmm. and will be separated from the sinful things of this world and separated unto God. And that process is, is underway. Yeah. And it leads to eternal life as God's child. And we will literally be sinless. We'll be set free yeah. from the desires, yeah. the activities, all of that. It'll be gone. I can't imagine what how, how, what a blessing that's going to be to never have another sinful thought or never commit another sin. That's the, the inheritance of a true child of God. It's, it's, we'll be, we'll be glorified, which is another. Yeah. Uh, that, that's yeah. another episode. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. another one. Sanctified is uh, we're getting yeah. there. There yeah. you go. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, um, I think mm. that's going to wind it up for this episode, that's good. but, yeah. um, you know, we, uh, as with every episode, you know, we encourage you to use in the, your social media, whatever you're viewing us on, uh, to use that like and or share button uh, to help spread this word to others, whether it be sanctification or justification or any other episode that you have viewed on your social media. Uh, and you can also leave us a word uh, that you would like us to discuss in any upcoming episode. We're really thankful to have you join us, and we want you to be sure and tune in to every Thursday at 6 p.m. to catch the Word. And remember, have you treasured God's Word in your heart today?